The first full field event of 2024 is here. That means we get cut sweats. It means our one and dones are starting, and we are going to break it all down right now. I've got a ton of stuff to go through. Let's get into it. Let's just quickly start with the one and done stuff. This is your last call. Do not email me on Thursday morning after two guys have teed off and say, but Rick, the guy that I want hasn't teed off yet. I don't care. Just go get into it right now. There are two options for you. Option number one is here on Splash Sports. The links and all the information that you need for everything is in the description. This is $150 entry, five entry max, depending on how many people we get into this first place is going to be up to $30,000. There is a flat payout structure, um, very you know subtle changes that will pay out the top 15% of the field. You need to be in one of the 41 regulated states to participate in this. That's the real caveat here. If you are not eligible for this or you want to play in both, you can join my one and done on rungoodgolf.com. This is not really about prizes. There are prizes, but it, this is geared towards a worldwide ranking system. If you've ever played in my one and dones in the past, your stats and your information has been, has been input. I've started to come in here and get the divisions ready. We've already got a thousand users from 11 different countries. So you'll be able to see all of that fun stuff. You'll be able to see your own user profile. You'll be able to earn badges. You're in divisions where there will be promotion and relegation, all that fun stuff. And for the Sony open, uh, your, your picks are now live. So you can go in and enter a pick right now. It's $39 for the entire year. You're going to get some you're going to get at least a physical product. You're going to get some prizes uh, or eligible for prizes. I'll have giveaways, all that fun stuff, but really just a, a single entry worldwide ranking system. Okay. Do not wait. Pause the video and go do both of those right now because I really don't, I want to have the first year ever where I don't get emails on Thursday morning. Hopefully we can accomplish that this time around. The golf course, everything that you learned about Hawaii golf last week, throw it out the window. The differences between the plantation course at Kapalua and Wailai Country Club in Honolulu are massive. The huge undulation last week on a par 73, 7,600 yards to a very flat, one of the flattest golf courses on the PGA Tour, set par 70, 7,000 yards. Last week, driving accuracy didn't really matter. This week, driving accuracy really matters. More on that in just a second. You look at the types of golfers that succeed here, and this is the correlation model from my website, rickrungood.com. It is a little similar to last week where the better putters tend to have success. And second shot play, while ranking pretty far down uh, the rank system, approach play is always important. I want to dive into this off the tee thing because I think there are some, um, you know, people say, oh, you know, you can just bomb it anywhere. You can just bomb it anywhere around Wiley. It doesn't matter how crooked you are. From a statistical standpoint, that is not true. It, it is not, this is not my opinion. I'm not like, this is not a hot take. I'm looking at every single shot that is hit at this golf course and plotting it and seeing where you gain and where you lose to the field. That is, this is not my opinion, but Wiley Country Club is a very unique golf course off the tee. What I'm showing you right now, this is actually from my newsletter, uh, or excuse me, from my my preview on rickrungood.com. Um, so as you guys know, I mean, I, I look at, so there's a couple of things here. There is something called missed fairway penalty, which means what is the scoring average, whether you miss the fairway versus the scoring average, whether you play out of the fairway. Very, very simple. Wiley Country Club has the third highest missed fairway penalty, three inch thick Bermuda grass rough. The penalty for missing the fairway is only worse at East Lake and Muirfield Village. Again, not my opinion. This is the stats. Normally, 
when you get to a golf course that has a very high missed fairway penalty, so it rewards you for playing out of the, the fairway, it usually, excuse me, tends to skew uh, towards the shorter guys or it doesn't really, you don't really have to overpower it with distance. Okay, so the the other aspect of off the tee is something that I've generated called I don't know if I've I don't think I've invented this. I'm just putting a name to it and sharing it called long drive reward. So how much are you gaining to the field or how much are you losing to the field for drives that are longer than average on that hole hole specific or drives that are shorter than average for that hole hole specific? Wiley Country Club also has one of the bigger long drive rewards. So it basically ends up being like this. Uh, if you miss the fairway at Wiley, on average, you are giving up 0.15 strokes to the field every time that you do it. Every time you hit a drive longer than average, you're gaining about 0.18 strokes to the field every single time you do that. Those are two very high numbers. So playing out of the fairway, very valuable. Playing, uh, hitting it long, very valuable. Hitting it long and playing out of the fairway, incredibly valuable. Okay, we'll focus on that in just a second. But that is like just fact. That is math. That is not really my opinion whatsoever. So when you consider that, and start to look through the names at the top of the board. Do we know any long, accurate drivers that might get a pretty good adjusted fit? Yeah, the guy who's like the most expensive golfer and the favorite to win. Talk about him in just a second. I, I mean, there are some guys that are going to get pretty good adjusted fits here based on this driving metric alone. And then the second shot, you know, you see a lot of, uh, you do see a lot of different uh, proximity buckets, or at least the proximity buckets, the shots generally co come from tour average ranges. There is not one range that is significantly more or significantly less than tour average. And then you just get a lot of these um, 10 to 20 foot birdie putts, right? These maybe nine to 18 foot birdie putts, like who's going to make most of those. So really who's going to drive it well and who's going to be great from like nine to 20 feet is, is kind of the, the key of what we're, what we're looking for here. Um, you can read more about that on rickrungood.com. I'm sure we'll get into it later on the live chat Wednesday, 3 PM Eastern time, Rick run good YouTube channel, but let's, let's go talk about some names here. All right. So here's the cheat sheet, rickrungood.com, my website. Uh, probably everything you see from here on out is, is from rickrungood.com. So four golfers, over ten thousand dollars, Ludwig Ober ten five, Terrell Hatton ten three, Matt Fitzpatrick ten two, Sahith Vigala ten thousand dollars even. And the guy that I've been alluding to, the guy who's the most expensive, the guy who's the favorite, the guy who is the best driver in this field is Ludwig Oberg. He is straighter than everybody else. He is longer than everybody else for the most part. And there is, I suppose, a little bit of a level of concern of how he played last week, a pretty ugly T47 in which he lost strokes across the board. I will say it's not a, um, it's not a stop sign. It's not a yield. It's just like a, eh, we're, we're rolling through in a parking lot type of deal. I don't think it's that big of a deal, especially because if you look at his round by round data, uh, he did play really, really good on Sunday. Uh, maybe this was knocking the rust off from the RSM classic to the century. Uh, he gained three and a half strokes to the field on Sunday. He gained across the board. He drove it. Well, I'm willing to kind of forgive two really bad rounds and one just below average round to get access to that most recent good round. And now on a golf course that should really suit him well. So I think if he, the interesting thing, at least from the outright market, I think I saw he was 12 to one, 14 to one on Monday morning. If, you know, if he would have played, if he would have been in the mix at the century, I think that number is even shorter. He had a very, very quiet week, but that that Sunday was impressive. And now he goes to a golf course that, in my opinion, is is much better suited for his game. You know, you don't want to if you're if you're the best driver on planet Earth, you don't want to go to a golf course where everybody's hitting the fairway and everybody's playing from the same spot. We talked about that last week a lot. So. This is a much better spot for Ludwig. Terrell Hatton, Matt Fitzpatrick, Sahith are the other three. You look at Sahith, and I, I've said this a, a million times, 
I find him to be rather difficult to uh, to project. I will say that he is getting a lot more consistent. You know, there was a time when he was uh, miscut T9, miscut T8. We're getting a much more polished version. Obviously, the win at the Fortinet, the runner-up finish last week, and I think he's going to have some really good golf courses for him. I'm not sure this is one. Now, if he is, we, as we saw statistically, if he is long enough, that will get rid of the fact that he is very, very inaccurate. Well, is he long enough? He is 64th in driving distance. It's not the worst. Certainly not the best. It's going to be a lot better than that in this field. He's very, very inaccurate. He's one of the most inaccurate drivers of the of the of of the ball in this field. So if you kind of go back to that statistical situation, he's probably going to be hit with that miss fairway penalty quite a bit, but he will get a little bit of that long drive reward. So maybe this is kind of a wash off the tee for Sahith. Uh, obviously, it's not going to work out that perfectly, but you kind of get the gist. I'm cautiously optimistic, probably won't go chasing those points. I, I think Hatton and or Fitzpatrick are a lot more interesting. Um, Hatton, you know, love this guy, right? I mean, there was just so many f-bombs on uh pga tour live last week but look at this stat profile you know runner-up finish the bmw championship plays well at the Ryder cup t11 at the dp world tour championship then t14 at the century where he loses strokes off the tee and he's just a little bit above average everywhere else shameless plug if you're not using rickrungood.com you're not getting the european tour strokes gain metrics as well so you're missing out on a lot of stuff here he has never played the sony open i think i'm more interested in fitzpatrick so Fitzpatrick was uh, better off the tee last week. He did not hit it well on the second shot, though he has shown repeatedly that he can gain two, three, four strokes on approach. He is better around the greens than uh, Hatton is, and he's probably one of the better putters that we have in this field. Also, not has never played at the Sony Open, so kind of wipe uh, course history off for both of those guys. But, you know, Fitzpatrick's played a lot. Here's the tour championship. He played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times since last year's tour championship. He's just never stopped. He played twice in September. He played twice in October. He played once in November, once in December. And then, of course, he just got kicked off last week for his first start in January. So good to see that he has never really let rust get into this game i'm pretty bullish on him in general for 2024 and i'm and i'm bullish on him here in in this spot as well the 9k range brian Harmon, Corey connors eric cole russell henley chris kirk last week's winner will zalatoris jt posted hideki matsuyama we we have got to talk about will zalatoris you know this is his first start of 2024 he missed the majority of 2023 with that back injury that led to eventual surgery, kept him out for nine months. He came back and he played the Hero World Challenge and he was horrible. I mean, he lost 20 strokes to the field. This is actually like punting his metrics because he lost so many strokes uh, in, in four rounds at a hit and giggle at Albany. But even with that, there are still some some really good things to look at. This is just a matter of how soon do you think Will Zalatoris is going to be back to being himself and how close to him being back to himself is he going to get? Because if he gets back to even remote full powers, you know, let's just look at everybody. Everybody in this field's last 100 rounds, okay? And, and this will be, I mean, we could just do PGA Tour. We could do Worldwide, whatever. Last 100 rounds. Uh, let's do. Let's just do PGA Tour rounds. I guess I'm trying to. I'm trying to cook the books a little bit for, for Will here, but I'm also trying to get out some of these. Some of these other guys. Okay, Will's out towards the best player in this field, by a decent gap. The only guy gaining one or more strokes. Uh, per round over the last 100 rounds. It's 1.1 for Will's out towards, and that even includes losing 20 strokes in four of those rounds. That's pretty significant. If we dumped those out, he'd probably be a lot, a lot higher than this. The other thing is he is, uh, the second best approach player in this field, 0.59 strokes per round. Second to only Lucas Glover. He is probably now this has a hundred round minimum. So you're not going to see, you're not going to see Ludwig here. He is the fourth best driver 0.58 strokes, uh, off the tee. So his total ball striking number is the best of anybody in this field. If you open up his ball striking number to everyone in the world, not just this field, everyone in the world, it goes Scotty Scheffler, Patrick Cantlay, Colin Morikawa, 
Will Zalatoris. Okay, that's how good we're talking. So it is just a matter of when, if and when he will be back to that version. I want to try to be early. I think there's plenty of, you know, the intangibles of hunger. There's plenty of long-term um long-term form. He's got to get himself into some of these signature events here soon, right? Like I I'm I'm happy to be early. The rest of this 9K range. Um you know, you look at it from a from a power rankings perspective and let's go back and kind of do, you know, last 50 rounds, minimum 35 rounds, all tours and just the the Sony Open. I I imagine we're going to get Eric Cole close to the top here. Is that right? Uh, we are going to get Eric Cole here. So he is gaining 1.25 strokes per round. A lot of these guys that are above him are either European tour or guys that kind of beat up on the Corn Ferry tour. So if we get rid of those two, Eric Cole might be the second best player in this field over the last 50. He is the fourth best player in this field over the last 50. So you get Hatton. It's Aberg. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was told by Swedish television it was pronounced Oberg. So Ludwig Oberg, Terrell Hatton, Brian Harmon, Eric Cole. So three of the top five golfers are in that 9K range with, with Russell Henley as well. Um, so I want to look deeper at Eric Cole's stat profile from last week, and I want to look deeper at Brian Harmon's stat profile from last week because Brian Harmon, I think, might actually be, for this golf course, a little bit more exciting. So Eric Cole has gained on approach basically every single start. He loses, we know, because he's very uh, inaccurate and he's not particularly long off the tee. He's actually quite short and inaccurate. I think that's going to be pretty penal around here statistically. Brian Harmon, though, Brian Harmon is, <sighs> is probably the most accurate driver on the tour. Uh, Brandon Todd might be up there, although we had a very – did you see Brandon Todd? I didn't know Brandon Todd was a club throw kind of guy. Throws his club, snaps it, whatever. The uh, the miss fairway penalty being what 0.15 strokes per round uh, per shot. Brian Harmon's going to avoid that a lot. He is probably not going to pick up the long drive reward. But you look at his history around the Sony Open. It's okay. It was better. Like 2015, 16, 17, 18. He had. Four top 20s in a row there has only missed two cuts. He's played here 12 times. The, the most recent stuff hasn't been as good. The, the approach play ha has really struggled, but he's been better in recent form with that stroke play. He's never played better golf in his life, especially from T to green. I'm happy to go to Brian Harmon. When you're in this nine K range, I will point out this one really kind of weird trend with Corey Connors. So Corey Connors is historically very bad putter, right? Every, everybody knows that he lost, uh, Everybody knows he lost five strokes putting last week. He lost 2.7 at the RSM Classic. He lost three at the at the Tour Championship. He's just not good, except here, <laughs> where he's gained strokes putting in four of his five trips. And the year that uh, last year, he lost four strokes putting and still finished T12. So there might be a little bit of something to the way he reads this, these greens, the, the the speed that they run, which is usually a little bit slower than tour average. Um, something about it, something about it is, is interesting for Corey Connors. Unfortunately, that's really the only thing that's not true. I shouldn't say that it makes, if you can, if he can putt here, it makes sense that he plays well here. He's very accurate off the tee. He's longer than probably some of these shorter guys. I mean, look at this. He is 45th in distance, which in this field, he's probably 18th and he's one of the more accurate players that we have and when he misses he misses very small not a huge thing here but if he can putt great so this 9k range is pretty full what i like about it is you know you've got some solid options in in Harmon. you've got some recent form guys like eric cole you've got some course history guys like Corey connors you've got you know past uh last year's last week's champion chris kirk who has finished second and third here which I guess I should touch on, I, I don't, you know, we've seen a lot more recently, um, guys that follow up really good finishes, whether they're wins with other really good finishes, Camilo Vijegas, uh, Lucas Glover. That is just in the last couple of months. Uh, it seems like it happens a lot more frequently. Now, Chris Kirk's demeanor is pretty strong for someone who's probably just going to go about his business, head over to Y Lai and start playing well again. You know, he, he just, he's, he's very intentional. He has a slow pace about him. He doesn't really let 
what happened last week or last shot or last minute kind of get into his brain. And then the history at, at the Sony Open is, is fairly elite. What I like about the Sony Open is that we've always played Wiley and we've played it forever, right? So you can go and run the best players in this field in terms of strokes gained, and you can get a lot of really big sample sizes. So Hayden Buckley, small sample size, he's the best. But if you just sort this by rounds played, I mean, there are guys that have 30, 40, 50, 60 rounds played at this golf course. If anybody with more than 20, Corey Connors is number one, Chris Kirk is number two, Russell Henley three, Webb Simpson four. Henley is is fascinating because he might be the odd man out here. Unless everybody in this 9K range gets some level of, 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 of equal ownership, where's everybody go? You can make a case for and against. Uh, you can make a case probably for every single one of these guys. So I think Harmon's more appealing. I think Eric Cole's more appealing from a general public standpoint. I think Chris Kirk is more appealing. You're going to get guys that play Wills Al Torres. You're going to get, I mean, JT Posa finished fifth last week. And Russell Henley is just, just Russ. You know, 52nd last week, not great. The advanced metrics are still, uh, you know, always phenomenal. He's always an uh, accurate driver. He's always a good second shot player. His history here, as just mentioned, is great. The win in 13, the runner-up finished two years ago. He's currently in a stretch of T11 runner-up T32, where he has just knocked the cover off the golf ball. Could be Russell Henley week. And that's kind of crazy because um, he might be one of the lower owned guys. We'll see Wednesday. We'll have the full on, uh, you know, projected ownership Wednesday, live chat, 3 PM Eastern time, Rick run good YouTube channel. Before I dive into the 8k range, I tweeted this out that underdog has changed the game and they're continuing to do so best ball and fantasy golf are now together for the first time. This is incredible. It is season long best ball. It is running from the Phoenix open to the open championship. So you draft rosters of 10 golfers. I went through my first one the other day. It was pretty wild. Um, you draft 10 golfers who you don't have to set lineup. There's actually no lineup setting. There's no trades. There's no transactions. There's no pickups. There's nothing. The six best golfers that you have every single week are automatically chosen as your starters. And then you compete against these groups that you're in and you can advance out of group out of round one into round two into round three into round four. There's it, it's phenomenal. It works just like their football product does. I cannot wait to get started. We will live draft some teams on Wednesday. There is a lot of strategy involved in this because of the schedule and the way that it works. You have to be kind of smart about who's going to play what events. So I will have some dedicated best ball content coming and coming soon because this is going to start the Phoenix Open. But I encourage you right now, go. Sign up on Underdog. Use the code Rick. That'll get you a hundred dollar deposit match. Uh, there's a link in the description. Let's we got we got to support this, right? We we've got to support this. This is what I've been wanting. When I partnered with Underdog, I wanted to see innovation in golf, and it took about five seconds for that to happen. I kind of knew it was coming. Uh, but best ball for golf is going to be incredible. They just added two new uh, contests. So now there's a ten dollar contest, a three dollar contest, and a one hundred dollar contest. So giddy up. We are going to do a lot of underdog best ball in the next couple of weeks. Go get ready. Use the code Rick and we will rock and roll. And I'll try to give you a, a, a big of an edge as possible. And I love that. Like you're not playing against underdog, right? Like you're playing against other people. So, so the underdog doesn't care. They want us to, have, you know, they want you to have an edge, right? It's not like you're playing against them. We're going to go and beat up on everybody else. The 8k range. Benny on Siwoo Kim, Cam Davis, Denny McCarthy, Harris English, Justin Rose, Steven Yeager, Adam Hadwin, Keegan Bradley. Oof. Okay. So much different than that 9K range. Um, I want to look at Cam Davis and I want to go by his round by round stuff here because it was nasty last week. So let's do Cam Davis. Let's see how bad it really was. Pretty ugly. You know, you lose four strokes on approach uh, in round one. You lost another two and a half in round three and another half a stroke in round four. The putter was actually pretty good. Uh, you can, you know, a little, little rusty in round one, but gained a stroke or more putting each of the last three rounds. Yikes. Not super thrilled about that. I, I think the one 
that has me most excited is is Denny McCarthy, just a buyer for this year. And and I don't think that Kapalua was ever going to be really that that great of a spot for him. So now he gets a, another golf course that rewards putting that is going to give him a little bit of a better look for being more accurate. And you can see, um, you know, where he loses off the tee is, is, is a lot of lack of distance stuff. So I, I think he's going to be able to find a better a better spot this week at Wiley than he did at Kapalua last week. I think this might be an interesting buy spot for Keegan Bradley. I wasn't super fond of him last week because, you know, Keegan's MO for a long time has been total driving. And that, that has dropped a little bit in the last couple of years, but he was still 51st last year in 2023. So in this field, he's probably top 20 in total driving. That's accuracy and length. So you don't want him on a golf course where driving doesn't matter. And he lost a stroke uh, to the field off the tee. He still gained three and a half on approach. That's a good sign. And he lost six putting. That is his worst putting performance since the 2021 BMW Championship. I, I think we can forgive him for that. Um, he's played the Sony Open a lot. Very mixed results. He's played it 11 times. His last four years alone, cut T12, cut T12. Um, he had another T13 earlier in his career, generally gains a lot of strokes in the ball striking categories because his skill set is being rewarded there. No surprise. Usually loses with the putter. I think he's probably putting better than he ever has. I'm trying to marry those two things together. So Keegan is probably my favorite in the 8K range that is a little weak and has guys that are going to, oh, struggle to put it together. The other one, Harris English. We, we we touched on him very, very briefly last week. I might have written him up in my newsletter. I can't remember. But if Harris English is healthy again, he's a top, I got to be careful here, 30 player on the PGA Tour. I don't know if he's healthy, but he's got five made cuts in a row, including a T10 at the BMW Championship, then a T14 last week. He finished well at the RSM Classic. He's driving it better. He's putting it really well. We just kind of need the the second shot to come together here. Uh, he did it at Wyndham. He did it at TPC Southwind. He has not done it since then in three straight starts. Mixed bag, more bad than good at Wiley, but I can I can see the building blocks being put together for Harris English. Before we jump into the seven K range, I want to show the trends tool. This is. Um, how golfers play against themselves. So basically it takes every golfer's 100 round baseline and then looks at whatever number of rounds that you put in and it shows who's playing above and below their baseline. So I'm, I'm looking at the last 20 rounds. This is pretty, this is pretty recent form. And you start to try to find, you know, guys that have a good sample size, guys that you can see are trending in the right direction. So Eric Cole, for example, is playing nearly two strokes better in the last 20 rounds per round than his 100 round baseline. He's doing a lot of it um, kind of across the board here, a little bit of T to green. It's actually not even putting as well as 100 as his 100 round baseline. He is losing off the T to himself, which is which is kind of crazy. Just trying to see if there's anything that stands out. Here's here's Davis Thompson. So Davis Thompson is at the bottom of the 7K range. Um, this is a really good trending profile. So I'll actually sort this by um, guys that are gaining from T to green. So here's Davis Thompson. Davis Thompson is playing a stroke per round better in the last 20 than his 100 round baseline. And the way that he is doing it is with 70% from T to green play, which is very, very good to see. Um, I mentioned this at the end of last year. I'll just reiterate for those who are, who are back and tuning in. Very highly regarded amateur, Davis, uh, Davis Thompson, not Davis Riley, Davis Thompson, and he's starting to put those gains to good use. He's starting to be a really good ball striker. Look at this. Plus three, plus four and a half, plus seven, plus 3.6. Uh, the results are coming in as well. Bunch of top 25s in that stretch. So I, I think Davis Thompson is starting to find his game in a really big way. And you're seeing that here in the trends tool. Uh, the the Probably the big storyline in the 7K range is these... Uh, Corn Ferry grads, right? The guys that graduated from the Corn Ferry have their card. Now you're going to be seeing them full time and they are players. Let me point out a couple of them to you as I see them here in the 7K range. Number one, and I believe his name is pronounced Adrian Dumont de Chasse. I think he's French, so it might be like Dumont de Chasse, 
something like that. Generally goes by ADDC, I think is probably fair. So let's look up his stat profile. Um, and his his stats are really good from the Corn Fairy Tour. I'm going to show you his results. Again, I've got the Corn Fairy Tour data. Um, I've got the Senior Tour data. I've got all the data. So he comes onto the scene here basically in June, wins the BMW Charity Pro-Am, then goes on a stretch where he rattles off that is the first of six consecutive top 10s and seven top 11s in his in his eight starts on the Corn Ferry. I think by this time he already had his PGA Tour card locked up. He went and played the Czech Masters. He missed the cut. He went and played the, or no, I don't think he missed the cut, but that was the event they were running. Uh, he finished 82nd. I don't think that was a missed cut. I think it was a weird event, but he might, I don't know. It wasn't very good. Um, but he gained three strokes ball striking. And then he finished T52 at the Omega Masters. So this, th this is one of the most highly touted guys coming into this year. He doesn't have a lot of starts on the Corn Ferry and the DP World Tour, but now he is uh, going to make his is a, a real run at at a PGA Tour um, a PGA Tour season. The I'll, I'll get to more of those guys in a second. Um, there are also a lot of these veteran names like Alex Noren, Brendan Todd, Akshay, Matt Kuchar, Adam Svensson, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just quickly here. Svensson, this is a much better course for Svensson than Kapalua was, and he finished 33rd last week. He finished seventh here two years ago. Alex Norin might be playing some of the best golf that you haven't really noticed. So his fall was spectacular, and I'll show you something else here in a second. Um, so he missed the cut at the Fortinet, then he rattled off five straight decent finishes with a third at the Shriners, a runner up in Bermuda. Um, when he gets hot, he gets really hot with the ball striking and he's gotten just an elite, an elite short game. What I'll show you is I want to go to the Holy grail here and I want to look up everybody basically since the fall, right? I think that's kind of like a interesting way to look at this. So let's do since, uh, what was the tour championship? Was the tour championship like September 7th or so? Uh, Maybe that's my birthday. I, I have a feeling it was around then. F well, when was the Fortnite? I guess I can look at that. Fortnite was the 17th. Okay. So we're probably, we're probably good there. So best players since the start of the fall, Eric Colt, no surprise. Sahith Ludwig. Now Benny, I only played four times. Ben Coles has 16 rounds. Um, he finished fifth at the RSM classic sixth at the corn Ferry tour championship. Uh, T42 at the Na Nationwide Children's Hospital, and then T5 at the Simmons Bank Open. Ben Coles, seven thousand dollars, had himself another really had a really good um, Corn Ferry year as well. Here is Rio. God, somebody told me how to say this, and I screw it up every time. Hissasun, Hissasun. He's seventy one hundred dollars, thirty two rounds. He's uh, T8 at the Australian Open, T13 at the Australian PGA. Those are big time events. 18th at the DP World Tour Championship, massive event. Ned Bank Golf Challenge, 9th. 21st at, at, in Qatar, 6th at the Zozo. Uh, yeah, those are all really, really good events in which he's playing great golf. Oh, he got a new headshot. I think that's updated for this year. Look at these results. And then this all started with a win at Le Golf National at the Open Day France. So, I mean, this is splendid stuff. So you you can, I think the play here, not only to be a little bit different, but I think they're better plays in general. The bottom of the 7K range with Davis Thompson, Ben Coles, Rio with uh, ADDC and not going to the names that people play every week, Todd, Kucher, even Svensson, who I like Svensson this week, uh, not going to those guys, I think is going to let you be a little bit different. And I think they're, they're better plays in general. My, my, my thoughts, 6k range. Let's see what we can find at the bottom here. Sorted by, uh, strokes gain total. Jake Knapp is 6,700. Alejandro Tosti is 66. The bad boy. He was great. Then you get Takumi Kanaya, Max, uh, Grazerson, uh, Jacob Bridgman. Those are names you're going to hear a lot this year. Nap, especially Nap, Toasty, Max, and Jacob, right? Because Kanaya, I don't think he's got 
does he have full status? I'm not sure if he does. I'll have to look that up. But here's Jake Knapp, just a top 10 machine. He lost strokes to the field once on the Corn Ferry Tour over his final 13 starts. A lot of top 10s in there. Here's Toasty, who we have seen in a couple of PGA Tour events. Remember he had a, he got suspended? He's a, he's a bad boy. I like it. Um, so he won the Pinnacle Bank Championship. We saw him here. We saw a run here. We saw him at the Mexico Open where he finished T10. And we saw him at the Wells Fargo, which is a signature event, in which he finished T47. Okay, so he's got a little bit of PGA Tour stuff from last year. A lot of really good Corn Ferry Tour stuff. Um, the others were whom? Oh, Bridgman and Max. I'm not as familiar with Max's game. Though the results from 2023 are pretty like Corn Ferry Tour esque, boomer bust, runner up T42, withdrawal T2, six, earning all your points in just a few starts. Bridgman, I feel like, was on the top of or near the top of like every leaderboard. Let's see what we can find here. Yeah. I mean, he gained at least nine strokes to the field, one, two, three, four times in his last 12 starts or so routinely gained missed missed one cut since may that's a pretty good season that's a pretty good season so those are guys I, those are guys that I would help fill out with as well jimmy stanger's another one he's 6100 he finally took the leap after playing a couple of years on the corn ferry tour finally broke through and got his card i want to run a model because I want to see what the model thinks of some of these newer names. So here's the custom model, rickrungood.com. You can put your weights in any any way that you want. Um, we are obviously going to reward uh, distance and accuracy pretty significantly. So we're going to say uh, 20 on distance, 20 on accuracy. Okay. So that's 40 right there. Then on the approach, uh, you know, we do have some a, a pretty fair – uh, spread of buckets. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do longer term strokes gained approach. We're going to put 25 on strokes gained approach last 50. Okay. I got to zoom out a little bit. It's too, too zoomed in for me. Um, so that, that leaves us with 35. I think we need to get some putting in here. We can do, uh, eight on Bermuda putting. And then we could also do, let's do this. Let's do like five on putts from 10 to 15, five on 10, uh, on 15 to 20, kind of those ranges where everybody's hitting. You could do two on slow greens. You could also do a, just a, a shorter term, you know, last 24 strokes gain putting on, on any surface, just so that we have, you know, you might, you might have guys that don't play on, um, you know, Bermuda frequently. So, uh, and then we're going to go strokes gain Y lie for our final seven, our number one golfer is, yeah, Ludwig. No, no surprise. Ben Griffin, number two. Webb, three. Kucher, four. Terrell Hatton, five. Maddie Schmidt, six. Eric Cole, seven. Adam Svensson, eight. Andrew Putnam, nine. Justin Rose, 10. Okay, so a couple things here. No surprise that Ludwig is at the top. Uh, Kucher's been playing a lot better recently. I think that's pretty interesting. Hatton being in the top five, I think, surprises me. No surprise to see Eric Cole and Adam Svensson there. I like that. I'll be interested to see what Svensson's ownership is because um, if he is pretty low owned, I, I I just, like I said, he had a great fall. I think he finished fifth at the RSM Classic. Last week was not a good spot for him and he played a better than average there. So that that's worth noting. Dylan Wu, 16th at 6,600. Dylan Wu was one of the most improved golfers in 2023. He just gained everywhere. Um, I think Dylan was probably going to have a pretty big year uh, coming out of 6,600 bucks. So you can mess around with this. We can mess around with this on Wednesday. Wednesday during the live chat, we're obviously going to do a lot of underdog drafts. I'll answer all your questions. It'll, it'll probably be a long show. I don't care. I'm ready for it. We will talk one and done. I know that's going to be a big topic of conversation. Get your picks in. Go get into the leagues. Don't make me hunt you down. Go sign up for underdog. I, I This is like the last week I've got to beg you to do stuff because uh, this season, you know, that going to start and we don't we don't talk about it so i'm just i'm begging you last time i'm going to beg you is right now i appreciate you guys i'll talk to you soon